What's good? We back with the Boss Clinic and more. And I was going to do go live on this, but I'm just going to drop the video. And if the discussion blows up bigger than <clears throat> what I anticipate, I go live on the subject. But, you know, I know I'm late. But uh, one of the homies posted that, uh, oh, congratulations, um, Basal Lomachenko on being a Ring Magazine Champion of the Year. How? And then I look at the, I look at the, the pound for pound rankings and I'm looking at the ring pound for pound rankings. I'm like, okay, Golovkin is number one. How's he number one? He drew. And then you go back and look at their middleweight rankings. Kyle's Canelo the champion, but Golovkin is rated higher than him on the pound for pound list. And they drew. And it was a close fight. So let me address the Vasal Lomachenko situation. Okay, for all you guys that's trying to cry and say that he's a fighter of the year. Let's 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 just take a look at the whole situation last year. The only true 130 pound fighter that he fought a featherweight wise, a super featherweight wise, excuse me, was Jason Sosa, a guy who had a handful of amateur fights and got a late start in boxing. Whoop de blam! That's not even that that's not even a, t- a type of pound for pound fight that a real pound for pound fighter would even take, or fighter of the year would take. Let's say that. Okay. Then he fights Miguel Moraga. A guy who's coming off a loss to Oscar Valdez, who's nowhere on the uh, map, fighter of the year or pound for pound of the year. So he's fighting a little, he's fighting uh, underbosses leftovers from another weight class. Then he fights Rigondeaux. He doesn't even give Rigondeaux the opportunity to choose the ring size, the glove size, nothing. He has everything in his favor versus a 122 pounder. So he dips down four more pounds from 126 with his last opponent at the 122. And, um, you know, he chooses the, the gloves, the ring size, his promoters, the A side. They choose the judges, the referees, the officials, whatever you want to say it. They choose the venue. And he chooses the weight. So he fights two undersized guys at. Two weight classes below him in Rigondeaux. One class below him in Moraga, who was coming off a loss. And he beats Jason Sosa, who is not a factor in the boxing game, to be real. Okay. That is not a fighter of the year. Um, That is not a fighter of the year type of resume. And I was listening to 7A Sports live stream with the brothers he had on last night. Shout out to 7A Sports. And they was trying to, you know, get a definition of what a pound for pound fighter should be. And let me help the brothers out real quick. It's not a diss. It's just, you know, plain and simple. The first thing is, who the hell did you beat? Your resume is the most important part of being a pound-for-pound fighter. You can go out there and beat, knock out 20 Joe Smoes, and people say, oh, he's a pound-for-pound fighter. But then when fighter A runs into a real fighter and he loses, you guys want to, y'all guys want to be all, oh, I can't believe he lost to him. Yes, because he finally stepped up. That's the first thing to being a pound-for-pound fighter is you have to have the bodies on your resume. You can't have a whole bunch of Joe Smoltz. You got to have you got to have a body. You got to have a Crawford. You got to have a Rigondeaux. Or you got to have a Leo Santa Cruz, you know, in the proper weight class. Now, you can't be going down there digging in the bottom of the barrel and, and getting guys. You got to be the you know, top guys in your division. And then you can say, okay, he, did he move up and beat some guys? Or does he have a skill? Does he have a look? Does he have a performance? All that other stuff goes, you know, goes behind it. The eye test, the you know, the eye test as far as the skill, yeah. Then the rest of that stuff comes, you know, right at the who you beat. If you ain't beat nobody, you can't be. You shouldn't be considered a pound for pound fighter. And that's why my pound for pound is vacant right now. I feel Canelo has the best resume, but he just drew with, Can- with Gennady Golovkin, and it was a very controversial fight. And this next fight will cement is he's number one or not, you know. So, it's really, for me, I, I explain to everybody, my pound for pound is vacant, and then it's Crawford, and then, then. There's nobody that has the impeccable resume right now. Nobody. Crawford's best win is Victor Postal. Not impressed. It's a good win, but it's not an impressive win. Victor Postal is no, has never been nowhere near the pound for pound top 10 list ever, you know. Understand, he, oh, he looks the part. He look, Yeah, he does look the part. A lot of people thought Adrian Broner looked the part when Ring had him in the top 10. Then he got smashed versus Madonna. You know, a lot of people thought, oh, he looked the part. Yeah, when you when you finally step up a competition to fight at a weight class with guys are equal to your size or bigger than you, then you start to realize that it's not a game no more. You should always get credit for moving up and fighting bigger guys or at least dominating your division. And Crawford has dominated two divisions, I understand that, but now he's fighting people that's just equal in size, skill, power, and all of that. You know, and that's facts. And now we're going to see if he's truly the pound for pound fighter that most people are already blessing him with that he hasn't earned yet. But it leads me to transition and segue 
into their pound for pound list, having Gennady Golovkin number one. How can you have a guy that's number one who had two controversial uh, wins? You know, how? He had a controversial win versus Danny Jacobs, which everybody expected him to knock him out in between six to eight rounds. And then he had a controversial uh, law uh, draw with Canelo Alvarez, which is this guy he was supposed to splatter and knock out all over the ring, but he fought like a like a like a pansy. He never fully committed to trying to knock out Canelo Alvarez. You guys can say whatever you want to say. This guy fought tentative. He fought scary at times. He never went big drama show and triple G all the way in. He took his time. He never gave him opportunities in Canelo that he gave Willie Monroe to hit him. He didn't really uh, attack uh, Canelo like a wild animal like he usually. You know, people say, well, you know, Canelo was a good corner. But no, this is what you guys are telling me. He was going to grind cinnamon all over the ring. His last three performances haven't been pound for pound type performances, in my opinion. Kell Brook exposed him. Jacobs really beat him, in my opinion, but I won't argue. You can give him that. But he didn't even knock out a guy in Danny Jacobs who'd been knocked out before. Then knocked down by Sergio Moro. He only equaled Sergio Moro's knockdown. Big deal. Then he, he didn't do what he's supposed to do versus Canelo. He's not what you think he's supposed to be. This is a guy we talking pound for pound who's been sitting at the middleweight division for his whole career. Was handed one belt. Basically, be on his another belt, he was handed by fading, facing David Lemieux, who should never have had the belt. And the WBA belt, he won that when he was, what, 16 and 0 versus a guy in Germany we never heard from. So, in my opinion, I always told you guys this guy was a paper champ. He got some skills, and I, I like his skill set. But now that he's getting older, that's going to be the excuse. Well, we never got to see Golovkin in this prime. That's not my fault. Whatever issues he was having over in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, UK, or with K2, that's his part. Now it's time for him to step up in a division that's filled with uh, with headbangers, you know. And then he's struggling with Canelo Alvarez, and I think it's several middleweights that's better than Canelo Alvarez, stylistically-wise, for him to fight. So it'll be very interesting, in my opinion, to see what Gennady Golovkin does, you know, after the results of Canelo, especially if he was to lose or win, but to lose, you know. But at the end of the day... You know, the ring is a joke. They got Kovalev at four. Kovalev was like nine on my list. I keep Kovalev on the list because I don't, you know, one loss to the one of the once in a lifetime fighter and once in a generation type fighter, Andre Ward is cool. But to have him number four above Earl Spence, you know, even above Canelo Alvarez, above Keith Thurman, you know, that's that's a joke. You know, and then, and then you know, he's bad. He's good because he beat Golden Boy fighter Zivansky. He's not the fourth best fighter in the world. You know, let's keep it real. I know the pound for pound list is mad stretched out. It's watered down because boxing is in a transition mode, or transition mode from where it used to from from that Mayweather, Pacquiao, and Cotto era. And you know, I, I understand that and I feel that a hundred percent, man. You know, but let's not try to make these fighters what they what they not. You know, let's let's keep it real. You know, they good fighters, but they they not. A lot of these guys are not even pound for pound fighters, in my opinion, man. You know, not in the grand scheme of other eras and you know other generation of fighters they good for this generation i feel you but it's because a lot of fighters are not fighting the best and the promoters are getting in the way and really blocking how great some of these fighters can be but you know lomachenko being the fighter of the year that's a joke especially over what terence crawford did this year not saying what he did was you know was great but it was better than what lomachenko did you know and gennady Golovkin being a pound for pound champion the ring magazine needs to slap themselves because they setting it up where canelo beats gennady Golovkin, they can crown him the pound for pound champion which he's a, he's more of a pound for pound champion than gennady Golovkin. he got better names on his resume and to me he he, he got Golovkin. but let's just say it was a draw so this time they're trying to set up where it's a winner take off for the pound for pound spot with canelo and triple g but us real boxing fans know and those ones that's objective knows that Crawford is good right now, and a winner out of Crawford in that welterweight division they ever mix it up, that's the true pound-for-pound pound champion right now. And we know if Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez fight all takers at middleweight division, especially if Ebanks Jr., Kayla Plant can come down, Laura Swiftheart and Jamel Charlo can come up, we know they we know they won't um, remain undefeated. It's several middleweight stylistically-wise that I think will we'll dog walk Canelo Alvarez. There's a few more that I think will be Gennady Golovkin. And they're just trying to push this little European invasion, and that's cool, though. But once they throw phase with the real fighters of the middleweight division and the real fighters of the, bo- of the boxing world, we'll see. Vasyl Lomachenko, I think he's the absolute truth. But it's time to move up and test your real skills. You only get credit for moving up fighting bigger guys when you're down at 130, 126. So move up, fight Roberts Jr., 
fight Jorge Linares, and let's get it popping. Because before for long, you're going to be like, oh, I'm too old to move up. I'm just going to sit at 135, and, and that's what I do. You ain't going to be great like you're supposed to be. We gone.